we'll continue with the what we started last week so when i select all these because i already uploaded it i hope it runs without a problem so so to install any packages you go to packages and then click install and when you type name of any package like mass so select that package and hit install it will install so you may have to do it one by one for each one of these uh, six libraries. So once you do that, run the lines, all the libraries so that those packages are available for us. So I will work with the same data set that you are familiar with. So last time I saved it in BOS by putting an arrow mark towards it. And the function I used for reading this file was READ. -E and it was a CSV file, so read dot CSV. If you click on data link, it will take you to my GitHub page where you can copy this and simply paste it within quotation mark and run. So immediately your R reads this data file into BOS object. So in this data set, what you have is data or information about each player in every game. And this is a regular season data only. It doesn't include playoffs. Also, this is the data only for Boston players. I did not include all NBA data because I didn't want to make the file big because we are just trying to learn some functions. Uh, but if you want to figure out like how many matches were played, so I want to find out the maximum value and our data is called BOS and the column I'm interested in out of all the 59. So for that, I have to put a dollar sign. And as I start typing number, so it tells me that uh, variables that start with NUMB are these two. So one is number game player, number game team. So I'm going to select second one. So the maximum value for the game number is 82. That means they played 82 games. There's a function table, Boston dollar number game team season. So first game has nine, second game 13. So how many players played in each game? If you see like how, how often one occurs and there will be nine players with number game team season where it is one when it is two there may be 13 players and third game nine players played so it includes both people who come in the beginning and also like bench players who played in the game yeah. and had some minutes let me copy and paste this while we are making a table i used only one variable but we can always use like more than one boston dollar sign and there's a variable outcome game, whether it was win or loss. So first game, basically we lost, nine players played. Second game, we lost, 13 played. Third game, we won, and there were nine players. Fourth game, we won, 10 players and so on. So Boston data. And this package dplyr, actually, it makes it easier to write the code. We make use of something called a pipe is basically percentage greater than percentage. If you are using a Mac, and if you do shift command M, you get that percentage greater than percentage, which will connect your Boston data to whatever we do next. Shift command M on Mac, or I think shift control M on Windows, it should work. And then we use this function select, so as I'm typing, you can see this function select is from dplyr and it also gives you a brief uh, description what it does. Using select, we can specify which columns we are interested in. So let's say for whatever reason, I want column number 23 out of 59 columns, 31 colon 35. So basically 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So how many points a player made? If you are typing name of a variable, then you have to put it in quotation. So either you can start with quotation and say PTS, 
or if you simply type PTS and double click and hit quotation, it will automatically include that variable in quotation mark. So out of all 59 columns, it will only give me the columns that I indicated. So 23rd column is basically name of the player. 31st one is a percentage field goals and so on. And then the last one is PTS, how many points this player made. I did not store this in some object. So when I don't store it in object, then I directly get the output, but it can be easily saved into some object. So for example, let's say I want to store this in my data and immediately you'll see in third window, my data is created with only those seven variables. If you click on my data, you'll see only those variables. What if we want some specific rows? Select only allows us to select specific columns. What about specific uh, rows? So filter can do that. Let me copy this part. And then out of this, I'm going to filter. But before that, I need to add this pipe. So I want to connect Boston and those specific columns to filter now. And out of all the data that I have, 884 rows for all the players. Now I want only those rows of data where the player name player. So that's a, that's a variable out of 59. One of the columns is name player equal to. When you want to say equal to, we don't use one equal sign, but we use two equal signs. And then you supply name of the player, but name is text data. So you have to put that in quotation mark or JSON Tatum, like one of the players from Boston Celtics. So let me store this also in maybe my data one. A was added instead of one, so that's okay. So now instead of 884 rows, I only have 76 rows. If you click on that, you'll see that under name player, there is only one name and the metrics that we selected or columns we selected are there. So you can always like arrange them and see like this is in ascending or descending order. So there were two games out of uh, 76 games in which uh, Tatum played and scored 50 plus and so on. I have used a specific player name, which is like text data. So let me copy and paste this below. And instead of this, I can even say, give me only those rows where points are greater than maybe 40. This time, let me call this one, my data one. Seven times a player scored more than 40 points and two times it was brown and five times it was Tatum. So it could be a numeric value that can give you specific rows or it could be text kind of variable. So filter allows you to basically select specific rows and select allows you to select specific columns. So with the combination of the two, you can play with and get any kind of data that you want. Let's copy this. I'm going to remove these, uh, this point exclamation mark and just use greater than 40. And I will not save this this time. I will we'll just get the output because this is a smaller output. So if I run this, you can see the last column, you have 46, 41, et cetera. But if you want the output to show a particular column in descending or ascending order, you can add this pipe symbol again, arrange. So, so I'm going to say DESC. I want descending order. And then you specify which column. So if I say points PTS, so now it is in descending order of points. Or if you want to say FG3M, three pointers made, FG3M. So in this game, nine three pointers were made and total score was 51, eight, in 46 and so on. So basically it simply arranges data in descending order for a specific column.